We kick off with an earnings alert on Alphabet. The stock higher after reporting a mixed quarter. Alphabet's call now underway. We've got full team coverage standing by. Loop Ventures' Gene Munster is listening in on his red phone. But let's start off with Deidre Bosa with more on Alphabet's big quarter. Deidre. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Hey, just on the call right now. Um, so looking up to you guys, uh, Ruth Port, actually, the CFO, was just talking. I was listening so intently because she was talking about the second quarter, and she said that they are seeing some signs of commercial activity recovering, but she said that it would be too early, too premature to make any kind of conclusion or talk about how durable that may be. Now, going back to the results, the ad revenues were hit, but perhaps not to the extent as Wall Street was expecting. So um, Sundar Pichar, he echoed the comments that CFO Ruth Porat Med saying, made, saying that it was a tale of two quarters, um, strong at the start, then ad revenue declined. He also struck an optimistic note, saying that he had some reasons to be confident. Have a listen. There's no thought, so let me just explain that to you. He said um, that he was optimistic because, as they saw after the financial crisis in 2008, one of the strongest features of search is that it can be adjusted easily. You can turn it on and off, so that is cost-effective for many of their customers. He also said that their business, the Alphabet business, is more diversified now than it was in 2008. He said the prime example of that was cloud. So Alphabet saying that they are not going to be cutting any investments or headcount or hiring in cloud, whereas they are in terms of short-term levers, which we have heard over the past quarter. Um, Pichai also said that YouTube and Android Play were bright spots. He said that they now have 2.5 billion monthly active play devices worldwide. This fits into the contact tracing story that um, Google is working on with Apple. Tells you the huge reach that that could have. Guys, I also want to uh, talk about Alphabet's capital return program. This was a major question for many on the street. The company repurchased $8.5 billion worth of shares in the quarter, and uh, CFO Ruth Porat telling us that that remains intact, that $25 billion share repurchase program. Um, the call's still going, and I'll get back on it. Expect Q&A to start very soon. All right, Deidre, any color when it came to the commentary about the pickup in commercial activity in the second quarter, where that commercial activity might be coming from, whether it be travel or small, medium-sized businesses, which are huge advertisers for Google, or maybe even geographically in terms of maybe the places hardest hit past the peak are starting to pick up now? That's a great question, Melissa. They were just getting into it, which is why I was late to look up at you guys. Um, but she said that they're seeing some recover. But when I did speak to CFO Ruth Port on the phone, I did ask her directly if there was any surprises, if they're seeing any um, business pick up among certain industries. She hesitated. She said she wouldn't call out any specific industry. And as you mentioned, travel makes up a lot of Google's ad exposure. But she said that there were pockets within um, many of them that were seeing some bumps. Uh, she didn't say exactly what. I'm hoping that they'll give a little bit more color there on the call. She just said that they're seeing a little bit more um, and did not want to draw any conclusions. So they're clearly being quite cautious, but also striking a little bit of a confident note, which is perhaps why you're seeing shares up about 4% in the after hours. All right. Get back to that call, Deidre. Thank you so much, Deidre Bosa. Uh, Guy Dami, I go to you. Deidre had mentioned the shares up about 4%. We were down 3% uh, during the regular session for Google. So if you put that move in context, uh, I don't know if there's a real judgment in the stock market so far on how the quarter was. Now, so look, so to your point, we're basically where we closed yesterday at 1270 or so of <clears throat> If my math is right. So let's that's number one. So we basically got back where we lost today. Number one. Number two, uh, I think what you're encouraged by is the YouTube year over year revenue growth. You're probably growing at 34, 35 percent. That's good. YouTube's probably now 10, 11 percent of overall revenue. What you're disappointed about, I think, is the fact that acquisition costs went up, which means that operating margins are now below 20 percent. Now, you can make a very compelling case for Google on a, on a multiple level and just in terms of a cost level. It's not expensive in terms of earnings. But this is what I would say. It made an all-time high of 1530 or so on February 20th. The recent low on March 23rd was basically 1008 So it's not surprising that this 1270 level has been sort of a point of where it's just sort of stalled now for a week or so. If you're bullish on the overall market, I think you say, you know what, good enough, the stock's going to continue to go higher. But if you think today is some sort of turn, which, by the way, I do, I think you're taking profits here and looking to buy Google cheaper than where we are right now. I mean, largely, most people, Grasso, are looking through the quarter that was reported. 
if they can get engagement higher, is this then a move for more share in the future? And when advertising does come back, they may be in a better position to actually monetize that. Yeah, I agree with that. And I like the way you set it up with Guy talking about today's move. And I think if you look at the backdrop of what we've seen, the FANG stocks uh, for the last two days have been sold off because there's no way that their safety bet or their safety status that we've seen in the last couple of weeks can really play out with the rubber meeting the road. So what do I mean by that? You have earnings. I don't think the earnings are going to match up. And when Google says they're diversified, out of their main search business, they're, they're making 160 billion. The next best bet is 660 million in their other bets. They are not diversified. They're attached to the ad spend. So that's, that's one thing. Yes, on one, on one side of the scale, you have the engagement. But we need to look through Corona to get back to normal life before we start worrying about how these things play out. So I will tell you that if these numbers, which seem OK, seem to last for the rest of the FANG names, then you could see basically that unwind, that rotation that we've seen in the last two days or so into value sort of go, uh, fall off the table. I'm long value. I'm long growth. I'd like to see that, that value play work for the next couple of weeks. But if we get earnings out of Facebook tomorrow and earnings out of Netflix and on the whole gamut of them, I think it'll be enough to make it so that this rotation only lasts for a couple of days. But I'm pulling for tech growth to be sold and value to be bought at this point in the equation. Tim, come into the conversation. Yeah, so look, I, I think you, I, I want to talk bottom up. I want to talk about Google relative to themselves and relative to the growth areas. Look, YouTube uh, up 33% on, on ad revenues is, is fantastic. It's a $4 billion business. Uh, we wanted to see this thing grow. What's going on in cloud for them up 52%. Remember where the multiples coming for other big players in, in, in mega cap tech, obviously Amazon is coming from cloud and Microsoft. Look at that. So uh, up 52% on cloud. Uh, we all know that it's roughly a 59% ad spend story at Google. Um, and, and everybody knows the, the concern we have around the ad business. I, I want to say uh, here's a, a, a positive spin on that. Uh, what's going on in linear TV and the eventual destruction and that which is also helping Netflix even during a difficult time of competition is fantastic for Google. Um, this is a tailwind for YouTube. It's a tailwind for some of their other businesses. So um, if you look at this uh, as a tale of two quarters, as we heard uh, it described, um, I, I think relative to uh, e either one of those quarters, the core businesses that you want to see grow are doing better than expected. This is a 20 times multiple for a company of that size where almost 18 percent of the company's market cap is in cash. This is the easiest uh, you know, high conviction play in the market for me right now. And I think it's something people, uh, despite the obvious headwinds, should get comfortable with the bottom up story as much as the top down. Karen Feinerman, your shots here. So what you make of the quarter? Yes. OK, sorry about that. I thought it was a, it was a relief. I mean, you know, clearly the um, the revenue numbers are good. But really, the, the question about the story is what's going to happen now? But um, I think that, uh, I guess, so it's a complete reversal of the stock action during the day. I mean, I agree with everything Tim was saying. This, I mean, this really is an incredibly powerful story when you think about the cash hoard, which is enormous, when you think about the mode of their business, when you think about, I mean, we haven't even really started to see cost cuts, which is something we really never see from Google in any meaningful way. So um, I think to the extent that there's softness, they'll be able to help the bottom line somewhat. But it's not really a, a, you know, a near second quarter, third quarter story even. It's just a, it's such an extraordinary business. And that cash hoard is huge. I'm glad they're still using it because that cushion is gigantic. But also, you take that cash out of the valuation and it gets even cheaper. It is not a, it is not a crazy price for an extraordinary business.